Hello, what's up everybody? My name is I Don't Know Tech Now, and today I am talking about Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Now I know it's everywhere already, and I know you probably can't get away from it, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway, because it's my channel, I don't do what I want, and I just beat the game, and yeah. So let's go ahead and get started. So Paper Mario, the original Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, originally came out on July 22nd, 2004, only like four years after the first Paper Mario. It's definitely considered one of the best Mario RPGs, if not the best Mario RPG alongside Super Mario RPG that also just came out on the Switch, or the Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, which is kind of funny because all those things are related to stars, kind of. I mean, Superstar Saga kind of is, it just has star in the name, but Mario RPG also has seven stars in it, so it's like very coincidental that they take inspiration for each other. But it is also Nintendo, so they want to make their things themed around stars. Upon its release, it immediately became a cult classic on the GameCube, also becoming one of the rarest games to find for the GameCube, and raising up in price up to like $200 on eBay auctions and stuff like that. It's crazy how much it costs nowadays just on that game, which is why piracy is very popular because of that type of stuff. Finding games and being able to buy games like that is just... It's crazy that these old games that came out like 20 years ago are so much nowadays in just order to play a game that you like. So I never played it when I was a kid. I was way too young. That was before my generation. I never got to play it because, like I said, way too expensive. But then just last year, I think in September, they announced that they're remaking the game officially, but there wasn't a set release date. But then we finally got the official release date for May 23rd, 2024, just a few months ago. And I got it. I pre-ordered it, and I just finished it today. So I wanted to give my honest review on the story. I wanted to go over all the drama that happened with it, because there was definitely a little bit of drama. Mostly just people overreacting about dumb things, especially for a Nintendo game. I have a few pros and a few cons, because obviously there's that to every game, but yeah, you know, let's go ahead and get started then. So the first controversy I want to discuss is people saying that the game is way too shiny. I don't really know why they would say that, because it's more of just the lighting, and better lighting obviously equals better reflections, and paper is obviously reflective, and it is a game called Paper Mario. And that leads me into the second part too where they don't like the modernization of it, where it looks like a modern Paper Mario game. They didn't give it the white outline or anything, which people have been complaining about for a while, but I personally like that. But they did give it that glisten that moder that actual paper has, and they also made all the background and stuff like that look more like cardboard and paper. That's the only thing I think the modern Paper Mario games did do well, because I like the way it looks. I like that a Paper Mario game actually looks like it's made on paper. I think that's such good stylization. And even though the modern games have been just kind of okay to garbage, that was one thing they really set well to make the games look as good as possible and play as well, or play as okay as possible. They focused more on the graphics than they focused on the actual gameplay aspect. Thinking that it was a good gameplay aspect, like when they did Origami King, which I like a lot, it's not my favorite Paper Mario game, but I think it's well enough, and they actually did put effort into the system, not just making it some card-based system or anything like that. I like that system. Even though you still have to buy the items every once in a while, and you still have to go back and do stuff, I think it's a solid game, but I think it really shines in the way it looks. The, the way that it's stylized, and the way that it's made. That's my favorite part of how paper, modern Paper Mario looks. And to say that just because the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door doesn't look nearly as cartoony as the GameCube version does, I think that's just, people are just finding reasons to complain just to complain. Because I think that is just such a off-putting statement for some reason. I don't know why people would say that, because people constantly talk about how good the Paper Mario games look. But as soon as we get a remake in that art style, which they're almost going to be the same, one just looks a little bit more realistic, people start complaining about it. And that, that's mildly upsetting, but I like it, personally. That's my favorite thing, one of my favorite things. And another thing I don't understand what people are complaining about is the fact that it runs in 30 FPS. Now, the original GameCube game ran in 60 FPS, but when you were a kid, it's not like you realize that. And, you know, some people go play, or, like, people have already made mods for, like, uh, the Switch emulator Suyu, because they changed it from user to Suyu and made it open source. They've already made mods that go back and change it to 60 FPS, but just doesn't look as good. So I don't really understand why that's a big complaint. I just think it looks good. 
I don't really notice a 30 to 60 FPS difference, especially in a stylized game like that, where they're already gonna have animations a little bit more choppy. I think the slower animations make it look better, honestly, because it looks more like it's hand animated rather than just being a few animations that they just cycle over and over again. Before we get started on the pros and cons, I just wanna give a brief summary of the game for those of you who haven't played it. And this right here is your spoiler warning. I will be talking about the ending of the game and what happens throughout the game. So you have been warned. But yeah, so basically, Mario gets a, I think it's a letter from Princess Peach to come to Rogueport, which is this whole big island system thing. And you go to the hub world, you meet this girl named Goombella, and you get the map from Princess Peach to go find these seven stars that unlocks the secret treasure. So Goombella is being attacked by the x knots which are the big villains in this game. So you save her, and you team up together, and then you head towards looking for your goal and finding all the seven stars. And throughout the way, obviously, you meet partners and fight the x knots and everything. And there's this whole big story-driven thing where you get to play as Bowser in 2D sections, which are more like the original Mario games, which I really like. And I'm pretty sure that was what was the inspiration for Super Paper Mario on the Wii. I think that's what the director said that that was his inspiration for because he liked those levels a lot. So we wanted to make a full 2D game like that. You get to play as Peach in her specialty sections where she falls in love with the, or where her computer falls in love with her. And she's basically trying to figure out how to escape and tell Mario what's going on. Then you just team up with these partners, you find all the seven stars, and you save Princess Peach. Classic Mario game, you know, you save the princess, fight the bad guy, defeat the bad guy. That's it. And I think that's a good gameplay loop. And I think this one did it really well too. It isn't just, oh, Princess Peach is just sitting there. Or it isn't just, oh, it's Bowser who stole Princess Peach. It's more in depth and there's reasons for it than just, oh, I just want to marry Princess Peach. Because they took Princess Peach to be a host for the big bat that ended up being what the seven stars sealed away. The leader of the x knots wanted to bring Princess Peach to be the host for that thing. It wasn't just, oh, kidnap Princess Peach in order for Mario to get the seven stars for him. So, and he knew that since they had lied about the treasure, that Mario was going to go down there and use the seven stars anyway. So there was no reason to fight back against him. Just make it look like he's fighting back against him to make it look like he didn't want him to do that. They did a really good job with the writing. And speaking of, that will lead into my pros right now. The first pro I want to start with, as I just mentioned a, little, a few seconds ago, is the great story. The story is phenomenal. I mean, I just gave a brief summary of it, obviously. But they have, there's so much lore and so much, like, depth to the story. And all the characters have, like, their own background stories, too, and reasons for doing things. Like, Koops, which is my favorite partner, he wants to be a hero. He doesn't want to be a coward anymore. So he comes and helps you fight. And he ends up finding his dad again, who he thought was dead. And he wanted to make his dad proud and be like his father. So basically, he joins you on your adventure to fight. And it's just stuff like that. Like there's Flurry, who she wants to... She was scared of going back to the theater and being an actor again. And you work with her to help her find the ability to do that again. And give her the dedication to it again. And just other things like that. And even without the partners, other characters have backstories. Like when you go to the WWE circuit, basically. There's a whole WWE-like circuit in it. The assistant to the manager, she works there because she's trying to find her, she's trying to save her brother. And she doesn't know what happened to him, but she suspects things of it. And she brings you on because she knows you're strong enough to defeat her. So you hear this whole story about what happened to him, and you finally save him at the end. And it's like, they do that for so many background characters. Even characters you wouldn't really know about, they do that for. Or characters you'll never see again. It really makes you feel like you're in the game's world. So, they just do a great job with that. Besides that, I also talked about this in the controversy section, the visuals. Man, is this a beautiful game. They just did such a good job with the way they remade it, and it looks like it's made out of paper. And I personally like that style. I think that's the best thing Paper Mario has done, and that's the only good thing Paper Mario has done for a really long time. And they just did such a good job handling that. It's not just a retexture, it's a full-on remake. It's built from the ground up with whole new textures and whole new code and everything. And they did just such a good job. The lighting's beautiful. There's so many sections that just look so much more vibrant just with the added lighting compared to the original with the more flat tones and cartoony style. 
and they added depth and texture to characters like the paper texture and stuff like that. I love that and the attention to detail in the game because of that is just so awesome. It's just they did such a good job with it and I'm really happy they remade it. And finally, one of the best parts about the game, which maybe it's just because we haven't had a good gameplay loop like it in a long time, but is the gameplay loop. The recurring battle system where you get the jump and the hammer and you get to use items, but you also get the seven star power moves. So basically you get six different moves and each move takes different amount of star power, but, and it fluctuates obviously as you go through, but each move does something different. Like one, you can get your health, your flower points. One, you can use to raise your defense. And each one has our quick time event. They all have quick time events that you'll use to set up your movements. And every move is like a quick time event, basically. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's a Nintendo game, so it isn't like super in depth or anything. But they all have their own set of uh, quick time events. And they're all fun and they're all rewarding. And you also have style moves. So like in between moves, you can do style moves, which you like hit an extra button or something like that really fast. And you get extra star points in order to use the star moves faster and be able to use them more and more. And then the power up system in the game or the level system in the game is really good. Each, every time you beat a few enemies, you get these star points and you'll use them to upgrade yourself once you get a hundred. And you start off getting like five from an enemy and obviously the stronger that you get the less star points the enemy gives you but it does a good job with the level scaling with that where it starts to give you harder and harder enemies in most locations that you go to on a regular basis not really back in the old locations but in any of the locations that you go to commonly like in rope where after a certain period when they start noticing that the enemies do give you less and less star points they start putting harder and harder enemies so that you don't have to just run around everywhere to try to upgrade yourself. I mean, the boss fights also work the same as the actual system. They don't change up the gameplay. They keep it about the same, except it's a little bit harder. But you get like 20 star, 20 to 30 star points per boss. So usually, you'll get an extra level by the time you beat a chapter. And each chapter has a boss at the end, except for the eighth chapter. It has a few different bosses, but obviously it's the last chapter of the game. So it makes sense that it'd be a little bit harder. Now, here's the part where I talk about some of my cons. One of the big things I thought was just okay about the game, I didn't hate it. I'm not saying that I hated it. I'm not saying it's the worst part of the game, but it's the badge system. And I know that people aren't gonna agree with that because a lot of people like the badge system, but it's more of the ability to do more badges. I don't like that you get five points for health five or five points for flower points for your whenever you upgrade a level but then when you go to get badge points you only get three apiece and i get it because most of the badges work on a one two three system but if you want to use those nicer badges you gotta give up more points but as the game progresses and gets harder you don't really have time to do more battle points if you know what i mean it's just harder to use to give up those points to get badges when it affects like when you need that health or you need that flower points because it gets hard in the game and it isn't like one of the big things i also didn't like is that even though i was i grinded for it, i was i did some a bunch of enemy trials like i did the pin out hunter trials and i did some other stuff to try to get points i still only ended with like 33 badge points by the end of it which is it seems like a lot but that's only like eight badges and when you have to do like a specific amount to get like enemy defenses down and stuff like that it's just hard to allocate all that and as you get more and more leveled up the higher the badge amount gets and super nice badges use like six to seven points which you know when you use that you're giving up seven different badges you could use or five different badges you can use but that may just be me complaining about something that i shouldn't be complaining about because i just i'm not good enough or something like that I'm just not good enough at playing this game or I should just allocate that and try to be better. And there's also weird badges too, like you get uh, you get five hearts if you give out three of your battle points or your badge points, but it doesn't really make sense because then you just shouldn't get the badge points. It should just put it straight into the heart points already. I didn't really get why they had badges like that and they also have it with the flower points too where you get a badge that has five points but you have to give out three slots for your badge points. But you only get three piece, so why wouldn't you just ignore that and just go straight to that? You also get a lot of repeat badges, but 
the badge, some of the badges, when you get repeat badges, they don't do anything when they repeat. There's some where it like builds up over time, like you can get a heart badge and a heart badge, and every time you get one of those five heart badges, you can double it and double it and double it. It adds more and more. But there's just some badges that I have like four of the same badge in my inventory, but I can't do anything with, I can only use one because if I do all four of them, then it's just a waste of three badge points. So there's no point in doing all four of them. I just don't think that was a very good system. I mean, obviously it's a GameCube game and it was the second game, Paper Mario, so they were still working out the kinks. But I think that system is like the one thing that I really don't like, the badge system. It's not that I hate it, and, and I mean, I like it for the most part, it's just there's there's nitpicks that I have about it. I mean, everything that I'm saying right here is a nitpick because I still enjoyed it, and I still enjoyed using the badges and stuff like that and having that power scaling. So I'm really just nitpicking here because it's hard to find things that I really didn't like about this game. But that was one part that was more of a, oh, that's annoying. I wish that I, I wish that was different. Now, second is... I don't know if I'm just bad at this game at some points, or if I was just playing too long and then I just couldn't figure out things. But some of the puzzles, like, I was fine. I'd be fine and I'd be doing some of the hardest puzzles. And then I get to a point and I just could not figure it out. And then they give Goombella, if you press the, the ZL button, she gives you a hint. And she like tries to tell you. But some of the hints just don't do anything. So I'm sitting there stuck there and like five of the time, like I think there's five puzzles that I really bad, which there's, like, oh, probably a hundred puzzles in that game, so five isn't really that bad. But those five puzzles, I just could not get past without looking it up. Mostly in the early game, I just, there were like one or two that I struggled with in like the first four worlds, which is like, you know, it's not like that bad. I just couldn't figure it out, and then I have to look it up and be like, oh, why didn't you just tell me this, or give me a hint to do this, or I would have never even guessed to do that because it never explained that to me. Which, it does do a good job with explaining like the game's mechanics and like each character mechanics. It takes you to like a little training thing and you learn how to use those mechanics. But even then, it doesn't tell you like all the places you use stuff for. And I think that's one of the things that really made me struggle with some puzzles is not telling me what all I need to use those things for. And then the last part, the part of the game that I just, it was so grueling to get past. You, it probably took me about, about three, three of those hours out of that 35 hour runtime was just spent going through the end game. And it wasn't like there was any comic relief to keep you on, to keep you energized, to keep you going through. There wasn't really much dialogue to puzzle. Then fight five enemies in a room, then fight five enemies in a room, and then go to another puzzle room. And then fight three enemies in a room, but then go do, through two puzzle rooms. And then finally, you think you're at the end, but no, you got a whole nother room you got to go through. Then you got to fight a dragon. Then you go through another room and then you think you're done again. And then there's no really explanation until you have to look at the hints. And then you have to throw these bombs into these chomp chomp's mouths or into these chain chomp's mouths. You go down and then you got another room where the enemy is doing a puzzle. And then finally you get to the end. You do a boss fight with the leader of the Exots. You beat him. Then he goes into a cutscene and he's like, I'm just gonna kill you. Or if you try to come close to me, then Princess Peach is dead. And then Bowser shows up and you think, oh, thank God, well, Bowser's here now. Now I don't have to fight anymore because Bowser just fell through the ceiling. No, then you do another boss fight that takes about 20 minutes and then you finally beat Bowser. And then you go through and you, f you finally beat it and you're like, oh, thank God, I can go save Pre Peach now. But no, the X not leader while you're fighting Bowser picks Princess Peach and it goes down another flight of steps where you're fighting the final boss and then you're going through forever. It takes like another 10 minutes just to get to this point and you just can't damage it for like five minutes and you're like, what is wrong? Am I just doing something wrong? But no, it just goes straight to a cutscene. Then a whole another cackling thing where she's like, oh, join me or and don't and I'll kill you. And then you're like, no, I'm not going to join you. And then you go into the cutscenes where all the seven stars go up in space and or go out across road port and everything and start going into all the towns that you've been to and you basically you get the power of encouragement and the power of everybody gives you their power which you know i did like that part and i like the cutscene this so way it's just i had been playing for like three hours straight and i still wasn't done with the boss fight and then another cutscene and then you get another cutscene 
and you think, oh, finally, am I done now? Is this finally over? And then you get kicked out of the game. It just says, okay, we're just going to take you back to the tile screen. So you're like, okay, well, I'll go back into the game. And you go back into the game, and you got another five minutes of cutscene to sit through. And it was just, that was the most ruling part of that game. It didn't, like, ruin my experience. But, and I'm sure that I'll get people complaining about how, oh, man, well, that's just how video games work, so like that. But yeah, that's my ranting about Paper Mario 1000 U Door. I just want to talk about it because I just beat it for the first time ever. It's the first time I ever played it. I mean, I've watched old gameplay videos of it, but I never played it myself. And I just wanted to give my opinion just in case anybody, any of you guys wanted to get it. I would suggest getting it. I give it a 9 out of 10 no matter what I think and no matter what my personal opinion is. I'm still going to give it a 9 out of 10 because it was a fun game to play. And I always go through games too fast because I like playing games really fast for some reason. And that was a game that may, was able to let me slow down and just get through slower. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you watching my video. I'm sorry. I know I'm making a Thousand Year Door video because I'm sure you've seen plenty of them if you're watching this video. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.